Hello, it is Friday, January 5th, 2023. I'm Chris Remond. Welcome back to the New York Times Crossword Daily Solve. It is a Friday crossword today, which means we're going to be solving a themeless puzzle. No theme today, just clues. And this themeless edition of the Daily Solve has been brought to us by Dre, Casey Brandt, Michael, and as always, the indomitable Shulmaster. And we'll say a farewell to the incredible Horan family who's provided this channel with a great deal of support over the past months. So thank you so much to them for their time as supreme benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign. And I wish them all the best. Um, and uh, in any case, those four now are benefactors of the Daily Solve Patreon campaign, which means they support this channel and keep this whole thing going. Very grateful to that, as I am to all of the patrons for uh, their support at any level for any amount of time. So thank you so much if you're among that group. And if you'd like to be, you can head over to patreon.com slash daily solve or click the link in the description field where you can find the bonus videos available to patrons as well as the Let's Check the Crosses official mug for benefactors. And uh, it's Friday, which means it's time for my traditional uh, weekly mini puzzle pseudo speed solve. So I will get to that um, today or tomorrow. So look forward to that if you're a patron. And um, again, there's a link if you'd like to check that out. All right. There's also the Daily Solve Discord chat server, which is a nice friendly chat community. And there's a link to that in the description field as well. And finally, of course, it's helpful to subscribe to the channel on YouTube, like the videos, comment below. Those things are all helpful. Thanks if you've done them. All right, let's get on to the crossword, the themeless crossword by David P. Williams. This is his second or third crossword, I believe, and it was edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So let's start saving, uh, solving and see if we've got any sort of punny, misdirecting cluing going on in this themeless edition. We have blank TV. Don't know. I feel like that could be quite a few things. What an alley-oop is, essentially... Um, is that that's basically an assist in basketball, right? You sort of one person kind of tips it in after the others set it up. I think that's what that is. Uh, heavy coat, um, armor maybe. Heavy coat of something could be an armored layer maybe. Goal for some runners. Goal for some runners. I'm not sure offhand. Fleur de blank. Delicate crust on the surface. Of seawater. Interesting. Oh, fleur de sel, um, which I guess is literally sort of flower of salt. Um, and you see that sold fleur de sel as a as a as a nice kind of you know l large crunchy kind of flakes of of salt. Um, but I didn't know that it was crust on the surface of seawater. That's really interesting. Um, okay. Well, there we go. That makes sense. You could say, that makes sense. I get it, or I understand, or I get that. I don't know. It's a bit of a guess. I'm not sure. Broke off. Said no. Doesn't I don't really think that's correct. Earth-shaking event. A tremor, maybe. A bit of a, uh, I don't know, a seism, an earthquake. Joint. Um, not sure about that either. And here, never attribute to malice that which is adequately explained by stupidity. Hanlon's razor. There we go. This is something uh, we would all do well to remember. Most things don't happen out of evil. They just kind of happen because things didn't go quite right. Um, goal for some runners. Goal for some runners. Why don't I see what this is? I'm not sure. That makes sense. Broke off. I don't know. Set piece. Set piece. Piece from a set. Oh boy, I just I just don't know. I'm not not doing well with these little Punny bits around this corner. Sport whose name means the gentle way. Oh, judo, I think. Is it, I think that's right. I've heard that before, I'm pretty sure. Nick, Joe, or Kevin of Pop. Uh, this will be presumably 
brothers or people otherwise related in a band, but I'm not sure. That makes sense. I, I'm in, oh my goodness, I don't know why I can't see that one. Broke off, oh, seceded. If you, right, okay, if you broke off from a larger territory, you seceded from it. There we go, okay. So a set piece is a gem. A gem is set in a piece of jewelry, right, okay, in a setting, like a ring, for instance. Okay, there, that makes sense. Something, I guess, okay, I guess. Maybe this isn't a cyst. Boy, it really looks like it fits at this point, though. Joint. Oh, a marijuana joint, a reefer. There you go, and sli slightly slightly quaint slang, I suppose. Ah, I f that makes sense. I figured. There we go, finally. Boy, I didn't figure. It took me, <laughs> it took me ages, but it got there eventually. Apple product, question mark. So you read this and you would think Apple computer, you know, an iPhone or something, but no, it's a... Something that you use on an actual apple, the fruit, a corer, an apple corer. Oh, the, the Jonas Brothers. I have heard of them. Uh, not by their first names, but I've at least heard of the existence of the Jonas Brothers. So they must be these three, Nick, Joe, or Kevin. Okay. Best in an idiom. The cream of the crop, for instance. Uh, that would be the best in an English idiomatic phrase. How about that? You were warned or something? That's not, it's too long. Um, I'll be darned. That's better. There we go. Ordered lineup. The A team or something? Is your sort of your starting lineup in a game maybe? Not sure. Innovation of the 1920s that's still spoken of with wonder today. Is it... Uh, is it white bread or some other? I assume this is referring to Wonder Bread. Just because of the ending in EAD. I mean, it might not be, but it feels likely to me. What about this one? Ordered lineup. Okay, if that were bread. I don't know. Maybe not. Ordered lineup. So. Oh, an array. Maybe. Like an array of numbers or something, or an order. It could be, maybe. Just, I only really thought of that because of they are that I want to be from bread. Let's see. Aqua blank. Not sure. Concern for the 1% question mark. All right, so again, you read this and you would think 1%, the sort of wealthiest 1% of society because that's a common usage of that phrase. But because of the question mark, it makes me think it isn't actually referring to that. And maybe it's referring to something in statistics more broadly or mathematics. Hmm, not sure. They beep when tested. Cameras something? All right, okay, let's go back up to the beginning of the, the crossword and start finding other things up here. Business headache. Net loss or something like that? I don't know. I don't think that's right at all. Breeze for the beach, maybe. Breeze for the beach, a sea, air. Not stiff at all. Lithe, maybe. I mean, the problem, problem is there could be other things here. Amen to that. Amen to that. I agree. I don't know if that's quite as sort of enthusiastic enough to match this particular clue. Superficially clever. If you're superficially clever, you're sort of witty maybe or tea follower. Could just be tea he a laugh. I mean, you Follower often just means a word that word or letter or, or suffix that comes after what's given. So it could just be sort of tee hee. Amen to that. Superficially clever, not stiff at all. Amen to that. Preach, maybe? You could imagine that is a much closer match because it has also a religious connotation and it 
it's very sort of enthusiastic and uh yeah i think that's more likely not stiff at all. oh agile there we go there we go not live um breeze for the beach maybe this is still not obvious to me business headache and blank tv okay blank tv oh plasma plasma tv there we go okay uh, I was thinking more of sort of programming on television as opposed to the TV itself, but there's no particular reason that should have been the case. American, for example. Boy, I mean, there's a, almost an infinite number of things this could be in theory. But what is the one that fits with the crosses I have? I'm not sure. Pop-up destination. Add site or something? thinking of pop-ups on, on web browsers, which are less common than they used to be, but still, you still do occasionally get pop-ups, which I find surprising these days. Uh, superficially clever. Oh, cute? Yeah, okay. Someone says, actually, so the witty thing was not miles off because if someone sort of says something witty in a, in a uh, you know, maybe a tense situation, someone could say, oh, real, real cute, you know, superficially clever, but maybe not actually the most intelligent thing to have said. Maybe not the wisest thing to have said. Uh, blank is knowing who you are, what you want to say, and not giving a damn. Gore Vidal. Um, why do I not, why can I not infer what this one is? Uh, boy, I'm just not sure. Business, uh, business headache. Oh, red tape, bureaucracy. There you go. That could be it. Oh, league. Oh, American League. Oh, that's the baseball thing. There's what, the American League and the National League, I'm pretty sure. Okay, so a breeze for the... Oh, a breeze is something easy. Oh, an easy read, a beach read. People often refer to, you know, quick reading, uh, compelling fiction as, you know, a beach read, an easy read. Dark Side of the Moon. Oh, right. Okay, Mayor. So this is um, the kind of big... I think when people first saw them on the moon, they sort of interpreted them to be seas, uh, which they're not literally, you know, seas of water, but you've got these sort of patches on the moon that I, uh, uh, are they what, created by shadow? Anyway, there we go. Uh, here we have to mimic, oh, I didn't think I looked at this clue, but to mimic is to ape somebody, there we go. Oh, style is knowing who you are, what you want to say and not giving a damn. That, that, that reads, that makes sense. Okay, there we go. This was ad site that came together fine. Okay, good. So we've we've completed that little corner. So essentially two corners of the grid. Enthusiastic sort. Oh, an eager beaver. There we go. Having that B was helpful in getting to that that idiom. One arriving tomorrow, supposedly. Oh, is it is it is it, is it Gatto from the from the play Waiting for Gatto? I think it probably is. There we go. Uh, one arriving tomorrow, supposedly. That's a that's a fairly vague reference to a specific play um but there we go i mean it is fairly well known so goal for some runners oh right runners in an election they're they're looking for a seat an elected office there we go okay great common spots for autographs common spots for autographs i don't know Concern for the 1%. What do I think this is? Put off. Oh, defer maybe? Or deter, actually? I could see either of those being the case. You could deter somebody, kind of put them off the scent, or you could defer, say, a topic of conversation for another day. And those would both be reasonable ways to use put off, but they're different words. Common spots for autographs. Well, F doesn't look very likely here. Oops, this just looks a bit odd. Oh, dotted lines. There we go. Yes, on a contract or something like that. Okay, great. The brachiocephalic trunk branches from it. Are the aorta, probably? Oops. Um, brachiocephalic trunk. So, I mean, it, it, it's obviously this is an anatomical clue and uh, deals with sort of various channels running through the human body, veins, I guess. Um, okay, well, there we go. So concern for the 1%. What on earth is this? I don't know. All right. 
Uh, blank far niente, pleasant idleness. Uh, dolce, maybe? So, I mean, dolce meaning sweet. Dolce far niente. Sort of this, what is that? Sort of the sweetness of nothing or something? Um, I don't know the phrase, but it's a good one to have learned. So I'll have to look it up more properly after this. And then, in, uh, right, this is the innovation. Oh, right. Something, I assume this is bread. Innovation of the 1920s. Well, still spoken of with wonder today. Spiced bread? I don't, I don't think that's right. Oh, sliced, sliced bread. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, yeah, okay. It, that's, that's a really good clue, actually. Because still spoken of with wonder today, it evokes the brand Wonder Bread, but it also evokes the fact that sliced bread is in idiomatic English, treated as quite literally an object of wonder. You say, oh, it's the greatest thing since sliced bread, therefore implying sliced bread is itself something sort of astonishing and wonderful. There we go. Okay, that's a very good clue. Uniform. Alike. Things are uniform. They're alike. They're similar. Remark from one waving a white flag. I lost? I lose? Or something? Uh, the white flag of surrender. I don't know if that's present or past, but that part is probably right. They beep when tested. Oh, alarms or alerts. Oh, I see. Right. This isn't the cream of the crop, but rather the creme de la creme. So they're, you know, they both mean cream, but in this case, we're using the French word uh, for cream, which obviously is a loan word in English, the creme de la creme. Okay. Well, there we go. Great. And then they beep when tested smoke alarms. Good. Okay. Um, concern for the 1%. Dead. I don't know. Oh, oh, this is Aquavite. Right. Okay. Why did I not see? Ah, I know why I didn't see that before. It's because I had the cream thing here. So I had M and that ending with an M, it just didn't put me in mind of any of the possible follow-ons to aqua that I, I could think of. So there we go. Okay. That explains what was going on there. So dead battery? Concern for the 1%. Oh, right. If you have 1% charge on your phone or something like that, your concern is the battery is imminently dying, a dead battery. Great. Okay. That's another very clever clue. This is a very Friday puzzle. Fashion label founded by Rihanna. Oh, Fenty. I've, I have learned that. And I believe that is her surname or her, her sort of legal surname. I think that's right. Um, okay, great. Well, there we go. Red state. So again, you know, you read this and you think, oh, red state in, in sort of U.S. political terminology. Uh, it's referring to a, a conservative leaning state, but a pro again, probably not, especially on a Friday. <laughs> it's probably totally unrelated to that. Um, maybe a red, maybe a state of anger or fury, you know, fury or um, uh, I don't know what would this be. So you know, if, I don't know, maybe a red kind of a wound or something. I don't, I don't know. Blender setting puree. Oh, almost looks like fury, but it doesn't. Oh, furor. Right, furor. So if if there's a sort of general state of kind of commotion or or anger or or noise, maybe there's a bit of a furor. Okay, there we go. That might be it. Let's but let's check the crosses. John Deere product, a not a tractor. So but John Deere makes farm equipment. So what would it be? Well, let's look at this one. Name added to a Brazilian dictionary in 2023 as an adjective meaning incomparable. Right. Okay. It must be uh, Pele, the the uh, the great footballer. There we go. So that, that's interesting that his name has has entered the Brazilian lexicon in a in a sort of formally acknowledged sense. And that kind of thing happens in English as well, of course. Things like Quixotic or Dickensian or Victorian. Okay, John Deere product. Break from the band. Hmm, that's interesting looking. Ending with L-O. Huh, not sure what to do with that. And Eve Blank, playwright who created the activist movement V-Day. Probably Eve Ensler, who wrote the vagina monologues. Um, that would be my guess on that one. 
campaign, or let's see, I'm just going to check the crosses there, which will help me then further with this mysterious L.O. Campaigner informally. Oh, a poll, maybe a politician? One clever enough to win every argument, but not clever enough not to. Interesting. Oh, <laughs> a smart ass. There we go. Yeah, okay, that's a, that's a good clue. Uh, <laughs> clever enough to win every argument, sort of with, you know, wit or intelligence, but also can't really decide to just leave things lie, needs to keep pursuing everything. Uh, there we go. Uh, which is itself not always the, the smartest choice. Deceive, especially to avoid responsibility for something. To deceive, especially to avoid responsibility for something. To... What is that? I don't know. I'm sure it'll see, seem obvious in retrospect. Tail, maybe. I mean, tail could be a verb or a noun or an adjective in some sense. I don't know. Verb that becomes its opposite when its first letter is changed to an F. Hire and fire. There we go. Okay. So to think about that for a moment. But yes, hire becomes its opposite when the first letter becomes an F. Okay. Remark from one waving white flag as I lose. There we go. That has disambiguated that possibility. And deceive, especially to avoid. Right. To... Oh, I do not know why I can't see that. Oh. Shine on. Okay. This is a phrase I've... I've, I don't think I've ever actually used myself. I have heard people say it, and I'm only about 60% certain that that this is the correct context. But I think it does mean this. I think you shine someone on, you sort of deceive them in some way, especially if you're trying to avoid work, uh, you know, giving someone, feeding someone a line, kind of giving them an, an excuse that might not be entirely honest. I think that's what that means. Okay. Oh, and to tell someone is to chase them. So here we go. It's the verb. Word with electric or criminal. Electric. Let's see. Farm creature. An ant, I guess. Is that, like an ant farm. Yes. Okay. That is right. So obviously, again, this is a bit misleading because you read farm creature and you think livestock. You, know, you think cattle or sheep or something, but uh, nope. It's creatures who might live in a farm of a sort like an ant farm. John Deere product, right. Okay, Reaper, there we go. Um, for harvesting crops. Uh, break from the band. Oh, go solo, right, okay. So a member of a band leaves to pursue a solo career. There we go. And then word with electric or criminal. Ah, okay, electric charge, criminal charge. There we go. Fairly straightforward after all. Oh, what about this then? This doesn't look right. Oh, it does look right. <laughs> Condiments sometimes mixed with mayonnaise, sriracha. There we go. So sriracha, the, uh, the delightful... Vietnamese hot sauce. Okay, what some smartphones run on? They run on what? Do they, oh, iOS. The right. They run on the operating system, the Apple developed operating system for iPhones. The iOS. There we go. Snatched up in slang. Oh, yoinked. There we go. There we go. Um, I remember that being used a lot in the '90s. I'm sure it probably still is. Okay, set off. Oh, to trip, right. Okay, for some reason I was thinking of this as a, a in the past. I was thinking, oh, yesterday I set off the alarm. But no, you know, today I'm going to set off the alarm. I'm going to trip the alarm. Okay, fleet. Um, well, fleet could be a fleet, like an armada of ships or something. But it could also mean fleet as in fleet of foot, as in a oh, speedy. There we go. That uh, helped to talk through. Towering site at a site for a tower. A plane, as in, I don't quite get that, as in, um, uh, oh, what are they called in the, t in the tower, the flight towers? Um, control, the uh, flight control, what are they called? <laughs> Ridiculous that I'm just going blank on this. Um, anyway, uh, is that? I don't think that's the answer. Oh, cra a crane, a crane. So 
a, uh, a site for a tower, in other words, a site of development where a tower, a building is going to be built. You could have cranes there towering above. Okay, I think that's the answer. Uh, converse, oh, to chat with someone, to converse, and then not fresh, a oh, trite maybe? So maybe a metaphor or something isn't, fr it's, a, it's trite, it's been used a lot, and it's dead to language, it's not fresh. Alan of Growing Pains. Uh, thick looks likely there to me. That's a name, could be. Miracle Worker's Error. Oh, I have no idea. Oh, wow, we have two different, I assume, television-related clues here. TBS, maybe, starting with a T. Uh, got clean in a way. Bathed. Yeah, okay, it must be TBS. And then fixed is steady. Great, okay. So this is this is Alan Thick, And then, here we go. That was the Friday crossword. And um, a nice, I you know, for me, I think fairly tricky Friday puzzle, but maybe you had an easier time with it. Let me know in the comments or the Daily Solve Discord chat server. I am always curious to know. Um, but yeah, it was, a, it was a bit tricky, but also I think a very appropriate Friday puzzle. We had uh, plenty of little bits of misdirection, some fairly obvious, some more camouflaged to me. Uh, but that is part of the fun of a Friday. We don't have a theme, so we need to get our sort of cleverness and cuteness, um, to use a word from this puzzle, in a different manner. And that's how it comes. And uh, and there we have it. Let me know how you found this one today. I enjoyed it. And now, let's just discuss a few clues from yesterday's puzzle. Uh, let's see here. So, oh, well, actually, one of the more common things pointed out, and this is quite outrageous, I think, to be honest. Uh, let's see, who was the first person to point it out? ZZRZ4HM said, not sure why, but on uh, on desktop for me, the underlined clues were cl closed with parentheses rather than underlined. And then underground monorail says, this is probably to solve the problem other comments were having where the underlines didn't show up on mobile. And that is the case. A number of people commented on that, that the theme was essentially inscrutable if you were solving this, uh, yet solving yesterday's puzzle on mobile, at least for the first, I don't know, almost the first full day of its publication, because they just, they were capitalized uh, all in all caps, like they were on the desktop, but there, there was no underlining. There was no indication of which letters were special. So there was no way to infer what was going on with the theme or, or how, it, it didn't make any sense. So anyway, that was a huge oversight. I can't believe they don't test things like that on uh, on mobile. That was quite quite shocking. So sorry to everybody who found the theme completely uh, confounding because you certainly would if had you been solving it on mobile. Anyway, on to the actual content of the puzzle itself. Uh, Stephen Kiblin points out Teresa uh, of uh, Avila is not Mother Teresa. Um, she was Mother Teresa of Calcutta. And of course, when I see that written, I think, well, yes, that sounds familiar. Of course, that was the case. Teresa of Avila was a 16th century Catholic mystic. So thank you very much for clearing that up and correcting my misapprehension and, and uh, poor memory. Regarding SEPTA, the um, Philadelphia area uh, transport body, uh, let's see. This is Brian Spurrier who says, SEPTA is the Southeastern Pennsylvania Transport Authority. It covers the Delaware Valley area around Philly, including parts of Delaware and New Jersey. Thank you for that additional context. Uh, here's an interesting one from Boy Bergen, who points out a slight mistake from the New York Times. The odds for snake eyes are 35 to 1. The probability is 1 in 36, but odds are defined by the chance of an event happening, 1, versus the chance of said event not happening, 35. That is, of course, completely correct, and I didn't pick up on it while solving the puzzle, but yes, that is true. Uh, regard, boy, there were quite a few things in yesterday's puzzle, weren't there? So here we have from John Mayhew, the term desert rat is another term for the gerboa and was also formally applied to the now familiar gerbil. The desert rats were also a crack British regiment sent to take on Rommel, the desert fox in North Africa during World War II. There we go. Have heard that, have heard that usage of the uh, British regiment. I don't think I knew the desert rat was the gerboa. Uh, nor do I think I can picture a Jubal. Um All right. Anyway, 
Uh, let's see. Or is that the same thing as a gerbil? I actually don't know. I don't know if that was the implication of that of that uh, of that clue of that comment. Sorry. Anyway, there we go. That was uh, a roundup of comments from yesterday's puzzle. Quite a few. And thank you if you left one. But thanks as always if you've made it to the end of this video at all. I do appreciate that. And I'll be back tomorrow for another themeless puzzle or second of two themeless crosswords for the week, the Saturday edition. So do join me for that. But until then, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Mm -hmm.